Chuck Fresh from Computer Care with another video on how to really navigate the world a little bit safer is what it comes down to. So I'm here in my one of my Gmail accounts. Did you know you can set up like a billion Gmail accounts and they're all free? That's right. You can set up one for spam. Like when you sign up for contests and stuff, just use that particular email like Bob Smith uh, contest. Call it Bob Smith contest if it's not taken at gmail.com or Jenny Jones uh, school stuff. And this is a great way to organize your email so that you know exactly what is important and what really isn't so important. I mean, sometimes contests are important to people. Sometimes they're not. But uh, so that's a great way to separate your email, create separate email accounts. Of course, it creates a little bit more management and you'll have to be a little more organized to follow it and find where something is so you don't avoid missing emails. And if you're entering a bunch of contests, obviously you want to check that contest email periodically, which means you need to set up multiple email accounts on your device and remember all your passwords. But if you're an organized person, you've got a handy damn little notebook, remember don't keep your passwords on an electronic document stored on your computer because everything can be hacked. Your computer can be hacked, your phone can be hacked, your tablet can be hacked. So the less critical or crucial or private information you keep on your electronic device, the less chance you have of losing that information, you know? I mean, everything that is electronic and connected to the internet can and probably will or has been hacked. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. If you're keeping passwords somewhere for all these different accounts, make sure you keep them in a little notebook. Remember pencil and paper? What a novel idea, right? I have one, believe it or not. Yeah, I just, man, <laughs> been there, done that. And I've seen too many of these things when I was working as a computer repair technician. A lot of people had their personal information stolen once their computers were hacked. Somebody had control of their computer and they could read every document on that computer. Man, it was just uh, it was a disaster for some people. So don't let that happen to you, all right? Tip number one, make sure you keep your passwords off your computer. Don't keep them on there. Now, there is another thing here too, which is potentially disturbing. And it is very convenient. Google Chrome and a lot of browsers will let you save passwords in your browser itself, in the browser software. So when you go to your bank, when you go to your email, you don't have to key that password in every time. Now, to be safe, probably not a good idea to do that. However, a lot of people do. But uh, if you have a password on your computer, well, the good thing is that uh, Chrome, for one, will ask you what your computer's password is before it reveals those uh, passwords to you in a way that you can read. Otherwise, it just shows dots. So I'm going to do another video on that too. Just really go through all the features and benefits of using Google Chrome. Uh, we're going to do that in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Like, subscribe, and uh, comment below anything else you want to see too. So we're going to talk about spam now. And um, Google Chrome and Gmail, Gmail really, um, all the browsers can use, uh, you can use Gmail with uh, Firefox, with Internet Explorer, with Edge, with uh, every, every Safari, any type of browser, even on your phone. But uh, Gmail, for one, has a really, really good spam filter. They automatically, like, filter messages that they consider aren't legitimate. They don't want to throw them away automatically because once in a while, something legitimate does kind of squeak through there and they don't want to delete it because it could be something important could be something you're waiting for could be documentation that you need for a business or a lawsuit or something and you know nobody wants to get sued but thrown away mail because they don't know i mean this thing's still developing there's no surefire way to determine whether a message is junk or not and uh there probably never will be because as soon as somebody figures out the way to determine that, somebody will write a workaround or a loophole or exploit something else. So that's just uh, it's human nature, folks. That's just how things work. But the uh, Gmail application itself does a really good job. I and mean, this is my spam folder we're looking at here. This is my one of my Gmail accounts. And uh, you can see that a lot of things here, anything, I'm going to give you a couple of rules of thumb. So this is our second tip. How to easily identify spam email. Number one, if you see anything like this top email from this PC World Shop, which is probably not the real PC World Shop, it could be. I mean, it could be for all that. But anything that has icons in the subject line is typically spam mail. They're trying to get your attention somehow. Why? Because nobody's opening up their emails and they're trying to figure out another way. Is it spam? Probably. Might it be something important? It really depends on what you do and how you use your computer. Let's look at uh, some of the rest of them here. Anything that looks like it's bold is actually using a different font. 
like this second one here is using a different font in this ADT Premiere. It's actually not using a system font. They've actually replaced that system font with a different font that looks bold. And the spam filters don't, they're not actually reading these as, as uh, fonts, as letters. They're reading them as characters and it doesn't know what to do. So occasionally it'll let it through. Now this one filtered these things. It picked up on this this ADT thing, which is uh, probably not from the official ADT, but you never know. Um, uh, third thing is anything in a foreign language that's coming into America. I mean, why would you send me something in Chinese in America, okay? I understand that Chinese people understand English, but that's not the way it works over here in America, okay? We speak English or else. That's how it goes around here. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Um, here, this uh, fake Amazon email. You see how they put number one they put the emoji or the the uh picture here in the subject line so that's indicator number one number two it's got this weird font you see how the rest of these this third one here these are system fonts everything kind of looks uniform and then you see this thing with this weird thing and uh, the third tip too is oh, another one popped in there you see uh grammatically incorrect text now a lot of people don't know that but it should be welcome to and absolutely free. And in people who aren't native English speakers, didn't grow up with the language, don't understand there's a difference between a and an. So those are uh, kind of telltale things too. You look for misspelled words, things that are that just don't sound or look correct. Like these fonts here. Somebody replaced these fonts with characters and tried to squeeze by the system, exploit a loophole. And here's another one here, this uh, fake CVS gift card. Look how they put the uh, registered trademark symbol here in the uh, the from place. And you can, oh, that's another thing too. Hover over the email address. And you can look at this area where it says at, where it says cvsp.2.gcso.695110 at cm33g20whatever.com. It's obviously not from CVS because if it was really from CVS, it would say at CVS.com or at CVS stores or something that's legitimately CVS. So let's look at a couple of the other ones here. Let's look at the uh, first one that came. Where is this PC World shop from? So this is coming from mail.stackcommerce.com. Stack Commerce is a really big uh, outfit that sends a whole bunch of emails. Now this may be legitimate, but um, in most cases, it's probably something that's I don't know. In my case, it's not worth my time to open this up, so I'm kind of glad it was filtered in my spam folder. Let's look at this third one here with the weird characters. And look at this. It's got some kind of nonsense. 0Q36433 MGM. And this is a .com, a .net, a .org, whatever it is, registered by some rogue company who tracks these things and probably charges their bogus clients thousands of dollars to send out these spam emails and try to buck the system like all right well all these other guys try to get in but we've got this surefire way we just change the characters in the email and then we can get through to people's mailboxes <laughs> you'll be rich and obviously it didn't work let's look at this adt thing where's this from probably another junk yep look at this tl3x so this should say dot com or something let's see if i can find one that's legit i don't know who johnson iana is um quick coupling I don't know what that is. Lotus. What's this? I don't know what that 2E4.CN. That was from China. So you've got a lot of really weird. This Costco thing is probably not. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. S-Z-R blah, 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 at whatever.com. So the other thing is tip number, I don't know, three or four. The thing is that even though something looks like it came from somebody, even though these email, you can spoof it, a return email address. Now, Gmail's getting good at picking these things up, but you can actually make something look like it's officially coming from Simply Safe, right? This is uh, obviously, this is a weird email address too, but they could actually spoof that email address and make it look like it's coming from something at simplysafe.com. So you need to look at these other telltales, the misspellings, the... Um, unsolicited messages you're getting from uh i've never stepped foot in a costco in my entire life so why would i have a costco reward right we don't have costco's where i live we never did we didn't have costco's in this general area so why would i get a costco reward so common sense is going to keep you out of a lot of trouble too now you can click on some of these emails gmail does a great job when you click on it if it's in spam it will not allow you to click the link that's inside i'm going to go ahead and click on one of these and you see this it says 
this stuff was identified as spam. And if there's a link here, um, this sends an email. It usually disables some of these links. It won't let you click on some of these links that don't look legitimate, which is another great feature. Yeah, right here, Google says this message seems dangerous. Now you can override that and click look safe, but look at this email address. This is junk. You don't want this. This is not something you solicited. And it's, I don't know who webwonder.org is. Again, there could be a legitimate offer, but it's gone ahead and blanked everything out. Anything that could be harmful in the email is all blanked out unless I click this look safe. And once I click this look safe, it opens up the email and it could open up potentially malware contained in the email itself. So you don't want to do that unless you're absolutely sure that you know where this came from. If you're expecting the email, somebody said, hey, I'm going to send you a coupon from Simply Safe. It's going to come from this email address. And they identified this email address. Then you want to open it. But in most cases, you just want to leave it alone. Don't click it or you could end up in trouble. And there is something we've talked about before on this channel, something called zero-day threats. So just because you have an antivirus, you have the best antivirus in the world, you think there are something called zero-day threats. And these are threats that your antivirus company doesn't know about yet. And if they're not aware of them, they can't add their definitions to their database, which means that they could infect you because it's a zero day threat. It's day zero. Day one, they may have a solution that they will push through as long as you're updating the definitions in your antivirus, which a lot of people didn't do, as I saw in my business. But again, they're very, very dangerous. And just because you have an antivirus doesn't mean you can go willy nilly and open anything up in your email. So just be very, very cautious and trust the spam filters for the most case. And again, we'll do a couple other videos. We're going to keep updating this channel. we got a little bit of time now. We just finished something called IndieCon. We uh, actually run a program called Indie Originals Live. We do indie music because I'm an indie musician, indie author, and indie filmmaker. A lot of people didn't realize it did all that stuff, but uh, we're starting to blow that up too. So if you have a chance, pop on over there. I think I'll put the link below, and you can check out what we've been up to. Chuck Fresh for Computer Care. This is your tip of the day.